uh, parentheses in here, worked in here. Uh, from verse 12 uh, goes right on down to verse 16, really. He says, For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Verse 16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And then in parentheses, As for not the hearers of the law are justified before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So if you thought he was giving a pass to those without the law, or the Gentiles in verse 12, we find here in the parentheses that no one's excluded. Yeah. Because those Gentiles which have not the law do by uh, nature, the things contained in the law, they become a law unto themselves, showing that there is a morality, there is a law in written in our hearts. Uh, it goes beyond just man's ideas of morality, and that uh, you know we have come up with some uh, uh, you know construct of morality by uh, our society. It goes way beyond that, and even Jesus. I talked a little bit about that this morning. Even Jesus took the law and even went even farther uh, than what uh, you know what we would go uh, with the law itself. And so we'll get into that a little bit tonight. Uh, but we know that <laughs> it is not the hearers of the law that are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And you say, well... It also says in one verse of Scripture, and I probably have this written down. Yes, in, verse, uh, in chapter 3 and verse 20, he says here, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. You say, well, how could he say the doers of the law shall be justified? And over here it says, that there, uh, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Well, it comes down to that we cannot keep the law. <laughs> right. Nobody can. <laughs> there is not one person that ever lived that can keep the law perfectly, except for Jesus Christ. He was the only one, and that is because He is the Son of God. He is God manifested in the flesh. Amen. And so... He was the only one that was perfect. For us to think that we can be perfect by keeping the law is is uh, just ignorance. It's it's uh, many people uh, think that they can work their way to heaven or that they can be good enough. But the Bible teaches us that we cannot be good enough to earn heaven. That's right. And so uh, the work of the law is to teach us that. And you know what? The religious crowd is the hardest to understand that. It's harder for someone who was raised in church, someone who understands the Bible, someone who was raised around preaching, someone who grew up with, with religion. It's hard for them to come to the point of understanding they're lost <laughs> and without Christ because they justify themselves by the law or what they think. Uh, they are keeping in the law. It's hard for people who are religious to understand their lost condition. Uh, and that is what Jesus dealt with when He talked so many times with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's why He went beyond what they taught in the law to even deeper in that which is within the heart uh, to show them their lost condition. That even they cannot keep the law as what has been stated. Matthew chapter 5 in verse uh, 27. We find some examples here of Jesus going beyond what is just taught in the letter of the law. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27 it says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So we find here where Jesus took the law and took it farther to the very heart of the matter, and that is the lust that is conceived when someone is looking upon a woman to lust after her beauty, that lust that conceives in the heart and brings forth sin in the mind. Even if there is no action taken, it is still sin according to Jesus right here. But in man's keeping of the law, they would say it's okay to look as long as you don't touch. Right? We've heard that. Uh, that's the world, uh, worldly religion is, yeah, you shouldn't do that, but it's okay to look. No, according to Jesus, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. If you have a problem in lusting after uh, uh, beautiful women, then you need to look away. Amen. You need to keep from that. Uh, if that's going to cause you to fall, he goes on, and, and Brother TJ has been teaching this, if thy right eye offend thee. All that is showing that we cannot keep it. Yeah. If, if we, you know, uh, uh, was trying to keep the law for our salvation, we would all be maimed. <laughs> we would all be uh, blind and, and, and all that kind of stuff and all deaf. Uh, but even then, we wouldn't be able to keep the law in doing that because we are still sinners. Even a blind man still is a sinner. A blind and deaf man is still a sinner because he is corrupt. And that's the whole thing about the law is to show us that we are corrupt. This flesh is corrupt. It is evil. If we skip down a little bit to verse 33, he says, Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is His footstool, Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. We can't even keep promises. Amen. This is what he's teaching us. We're not even good enough to keep our promises. We make promises and break them, right? Because we can't control circumstances, right? Sometimes we mean well, but yet we come short because of the circumstances that arise in our lives. We can't grow hair on our head. We can't uh, make ourselves taller. We, we have no power to do that. That's why he says, swear not at all. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. And we read this morning uh, the verse of Scripture in which he said, of going into such a city and dwelling there a year and buying and selling and getting gain. He said, where you should have said, if the Lord will. Yes. Amen. That's the way we should talk. <laughs> if the Lord wills, we'll be able to do this or that. Amen. And he goes on, he says, ye have, uh, ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. Again, Jesus has taken this beyond what man would think as right and wrong. He says, But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, we, we like to think we could do that, right? But... What truly where this comes down to is with the, without the Lord's help, none of us can. Right? If we're walking in the flesh and someone comes up and slaps us, we're going to slap them right back. Right. And do even more, right? Yeah. Not just slap them, but we're going to knock them out. Or do our best to try to, right? This is all showing that we cannot do that without a change, without being spiritually changed. Jesus dealt with this so many times about the hypocrites wanting to 
make the outside of the cup look pretty, but on the inside it was full of extortion. God has to change a person from the inside out. Yeah. And then by His power, by His help, then we can be able then to do these things only by His help. He says, and, and if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. <laughs> How many people have been sued and then not only and, and lost and not only paid what was commanded by the law to pay, but then gave more and said, here, take this also. Mm -hmm. Has there has anyone ever done that? I have never heard of anyone ever doing it. This is what it's showing us. This is beyond our capability. This is beyond what we can do. We are undone. Amen. We are, even us as Christians, I've never even heard of a Christian being able to do this. Why? Because, you know what? Most of the time, if we're honest, we're not walking in the Spirit. We're not seeking God's way. We seek our own way. And then we justify it, right? We seek to justify ourselves instead of humbling ourselves unto God. He says, And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him plain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. That's, that's the way of the world, right? But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the, his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just, and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And the publicans he's using here because they were looked at as being the worst of the worst. Right? Tax collectors. You know, they're, they're the worst. Living off of everyone else's, you know, uh, uh, poor, being poor. And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. All of this is just putting a dagger right in everyone's heart that's hearing this. Be ye perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. And every one of us looking in within ourselves, being honest, should bow our head. Like that publican. And beat upon our chest. Not even being able to look up to heaven. And saying, Lord, be merciful to the sinners. Yeah. You see, the teaching of the law is to show us we need mercy. Amen. We need mercy. Without mercy and grace, we have no hope. And don't think because you're saved that you're above mercy and grace. You're not. In fact, we'll, we'll, we're getting into you know more of that in Galatians and thinking that just because now that we have been saved, that now we can uh, just by our own strength somehow, by our own uh, uh, will, keep the law and the commandments, you are gravely mistaken. You cannot do it. Only by the help of Jesus living within you. That's why Paul said so many times, I die daily. Because this flesh still wants what it wants. It still drives us. It still has a will that has to be slain within us. Look at uh, Luke chapter 10.
Luke chapter 10. And we'll start in verse 25. And this is probably one of the most famous parables of Jesus uh, in the New Testament. And we all know it. It's, it's called the Good Samaritan. But I want us to really look at this and see how impossible for us it is to keep this without, again, I say, without, again, the Lord, strength, and help. In Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 25, And behold, a certain lawyer, a lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So here's the premise of this parable. It's about inheriting eternal life. He said unto him, What is written in the law, how readest thou? Now again, the law cannot make anyone perfect. On the contrary, as we have already read in three, Romans 3.20, you cannot be justified by the words of the law, because by the, the law is the knowledge of sin. So we understand what Jesus is doing here. He's trying to get this lawyer lost. <laughs> yeah. Because he has no hope of eternal life until he realizes he's lost. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And he and he answer, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And we rush over that thinking, yeah. Preach it. That's good. Love the Lord with all your soul, heart, strength, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But do we really love the Lord that much? I mean, we need to really ask that question, amen, because we don't. I know I don't. Not all the time I don't. And I don't think anyone in here would say that they do all the time. Love the Lord the way that they ought to, and love their neighbor as their self. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. If you can keep this, because all the prophets and all the law are bound up in these two great commandments. Jesus said these were the greatest of commandments because they did fulfill all of the law. If you can do this perfectly right here, go and do it, Thou shalt live. But we cannot do it for no. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? <laughs> he was already starting to get convicted, wasn't he? <laughs> so he's like, well, you know, my neighbor being my friends, you know, but really, when it comes down to we don't even treat our friends as good as we want to be treated, right? But again, he's trying to justify himself. Jesus is tearing down that wall. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, now Samaritans were hated by the Jews because they were half priests And they were considered evil. You weren't supposed to look at them, you weren't supposed to touch them, you weren't supposed to be anywhere near them. So Jesus is really sticking a knife in here when a priest walks by and goes to the other side. And then a Levite goes by and he goes on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. 
And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Now we would like to think we would help someone in need. But it's not just helping someone in need here that we see. We see he went way beyond just helping them. First of all, he had compassion on him and went unto him. It wasn't, oh man, I really don't have time for this, but you know, i got to do something. No, he really had compassion on the person. And he went over there and he began to clean his wounds. It said he poured oil and wine, which uh, wine being having some alcohol to it would disinfect the wounds and the oil would soothe the wounds. So he's really giving his best to this man as he would want done to him. Putting his best forward. Wrapping him. Putting him on his own beast. And carrying him to this inn. And he says that he not only took him to the inn, but he took care of him. He spent the night with him because it says in the next verse, and on the morrow, so he stayed whatever part of that day and overnight taking care of this man in this skin. And then it says that he, uh, as he departed, he took out two pence and gave him, gave them to the host. Now it's thought that two pence were paid for two months in this skin because they, through history. Uh, they have found that uh, uh, usually back in this time in an inn it cost one thirty second uh, of a pence. So that would have been like two months in this inn. I mean, that's a lot of money, <laughs> right? To put somebody up for two months <laughs> in a place, right? But then he didn't stop there. He said, and whatsoever thou spendest more. <laughs> You're talking about setting yourself up to get extorted, right? Because, <laughs> <I mean, laughs> you know, who's to say that the innkeeper is a, a straight guy, right? <laughs> so this, this this was really showing us something that we, we just don't do. We can't do. It. Not in the flesh. It doesn't say the Samaritan was a rich man and could afford this. But yet he did this. And this is what Jesus is bringing out in his parables and in his talk. Is he's showing the, man, we, we can't do it. There is no way. When Nicodemus came to him, he said, you must be born again. That's the only way. Amen. That is the only way. Is a new creature in Christ Jesus. He says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. There is no one just before God by the law. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. and faith. And don't think just because you're saved that now you're justified by keeping the law because you still need power from on high to be able to even get close to keeping this right here. We think that we do good. We like to think that we keep the law as we could. But we're still not even close to it. Listen. We need humility to receive the mercy and the grace that God has for us. To understand that, you know what? We need all the help we can get yeah. from the Lord to just make it through one day. Amen? Let alone a week or a month or a year. 
it takes all that we can get today for God to be able to use us. Amen. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. These things are in the heart of man. Now, those who are atheists and who try to explain away, who try to explain everything without God, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're dishonest even in that because, you know, it's like trying to explain a dictionary without using, you know, a printing press. And, and just to say, well, you know, somehow letters exploded and, and, <laughs> and formed a dictionary. You know, I mean, it's dishonest right at the beginning. But the law is written in, in people's hearts. And they might quench it. They might burn their conscience with a hot iron to be able to live it the way that they do. But the law was written in the heart to know right and wrong. To know... I mean, even before the law was given on Mount Sinai to Moses, before that, you say, well, what? They knew right and wrong. It was written in their hearts. They understood what uh, uh, being good and being bad was all about. It is not like people don't know that they're sinners. It's that they try to justify their sins. And the law strips away any justification. And people need to understand that they are not guiltless before God. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 3 through 6, he says. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Yeah. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Yeah. How do we bring them out of that blindness? By shining the light on their hearts. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That same light that's shown in our hearts. Because they cannot see out to see Jesus. They cannot see. They are blinded from seeing who Jesus really is. But even that if they Jesus know that is the Son of God up here in their mind, it doesn't affect their heart because they are blinded. Their minds are blinded. There has to be a light to shine on their heart to sh show them their depravity. It says in John chapter 3 that they don't want to come to the light because their deeds are evil. Why? Because the light shows them who they really are. Yeah. Even Christians who are backslidden, they don't want to hear the Word. They don't want to hear. They don't want a light being shined on their lives and on their hearts. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says that they will not endure sound doctrine, but will heat up teachers unto themselves having itching ears yep. because they turned away from the truth unto a lie. But that light that shines is conviction of the Holy Spirit. It is the Word of God. It is the law that shows us that we have come short of the glory of God. Because when we when a person realizes their lost condition, then Jesus is everything. Jesus becomes everything when they acknowledge their lost condition. Yeah. In Acts chapter 26,
Starting in verse 1, it says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews? Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly, in other words, to blaspheme, to curse Jesus, right? And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly visions, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that He should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Saddest words ever heard. Not because King Agrippa didn't know he spoke the truth, but because he loved his sin more than he loved Christ, than he loved truth. And 
that's the state that the world's in. It's not that they don't know that they're sinners. It's that they are perpetually justifying their sin because they love it not. And they need, they need help, amen. They need the Lord. They need someone to stand and preach the gospel to them, to give them the truth, to confront them with the truth of the Word of God. That number one, there is no way they can keep the law. And two, Jesus paid for it all. Amen. Amen. The work of the law is to bring people to Jesus Christ. Amen. It says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Job chapter 9 and verse 20 says, If I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. At one moment we're justifying ourselves, and the very next moment we condemn ourselves with our own mouth. Yeah. We can't even keep it straight for one day, can we? We think, man, if I could just go one day without sinning. The only way we would be able to do that is by the mighty power of Jesus Christ. He says, if I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Man, if we think we're perfect, it's going to prove us perverse, isn't it? Because we're not. Amen. Yeah. Luke chapter 16. And I'm not laughing because it's funny. I, I, it, it's true. It pricks the heart. It brings true conviction. Luke 16 verses 13 through 17 says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and them. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Yeah. And people can justify themselves all they want to. And he says, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth the heart. God knoweth the heart. And that's the conviction, amen, that we might be able to uh, fool uh, some people, but you know what? No one can fool God. His law is not going to pass away. It's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than God's law to pass away. And the only hope that we have is the mercy of God, and the grace of God. And His mercy endures forever. Amen? Amen. And where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. Amen? Oh, how we should rest in God's mercy. Amen. In God's grace. And then Titus chapter 3, and we'll be through. I'm not standing here to, tonight to say that there's no way that we can do good works. Because if we are saved, we, we have the power of the Holy Spirit living within us. But we still have to crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts. We still have to die to ourselves so that Christ can live through us. Yeah. Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 7 says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, 
to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Amen. The work of the law is still at work in us. Not that we are under the law, or not, or under grace. But the law still show us that we've got a lot of work to do. Working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Humbling ourselves at the feet of Jesus and calling for His help. Calling on the name of the Lord to help us to be able to be what He wants us to be. Amen. And that is His work in us. His Continually molding us and making us into the image of Jesus Christ. But we have to yield ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. And not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to humble ourselves, to seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways. Lord, that you might heal us. Lord, that you might work through us. Lord, that you might use us for your honor, your glory. Not by our power or our strength, but by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just pray that you continue to grow us in your grace and to give us strength as we live each day, Lord, to serve you and, Lord, to uh, keep your commandments. Lord, that as we uh, live each day, that we would die each day, that Christ would live through us. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing. Page 267. I know. 267.
Page 408. 408. Loyalty to Christ. 